Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. In this video I'm going to show you how to set up Docker notifications to tell you when a new image is available and we're going to be using the Docker image update notifier called Dion. For anyone who's home labbing and is probably following my tutorials, you've probably got a lot of images that are floating around now and keeping them up to date can be a problem. There are cool things like Watchtower which can dynamically update your applications but this can be problematic because new versions aren't necessarily compatible and often it won't honor the way in which those containers are shut down and restarted and that can lead to your services going out or just breaking and then you're gonna to have to go through a horrible process of fixing them. Dion is different because it doesn't do the update, it simply notifies you when an update is available. So that gives you the opportunity to then read through and plan how you're actually gonna update it without breaking your existing infrastructure. I'm gonna show you how to deploy that and set up some notifications. The examples I'll use are Gotify and Discord, but there are lots of other options available, things like Notify, Slack, etc., and we'll have a look at those later in the video. So let's jump into VS Code now and get started. Now, Dion does have a ton of configuration that's available, so please do go and check the documentation to make sure you can tailor it to exactly how you want it. I think this will give you a good start, but again, this is tailored to my setup. So Dion is command line interface only, but you don't really need to go into the command line to get this working. You should be able to copy what I have here and it will have the service up and running against all of the containers that you have up and running on your Docker environment. So let's have a quick run through this and make sure we understand what's going on. So I've set this to the latest image, so it will pull that. I've set the container name and we've done the command serve, which we've used in previous videos, which basically tells it to be in a server mode for this container. The volumes I've got are here, the data volume. So that's where it's gonna store the actual container configuration data. And it's also gonna store a little database in that location because it needs to know what services you are running and also keep a log of what the latest is when it goes and prowls the internet for the latest version. It'll actually, because of this next step being plugged into the Docker sock, it will know which containers you are running and where their respective repositories are. So that's how it's able to function and provide this service. Next, we get into the environment section, and the first bit is pretty straightforward if you've seen some of my earlier videos. So we need to set a time zone, and I've added here the log level of info, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute in Portainer. Next, we want to set the number of workers. So this is the number of workers that are gonna be looking for new containers. You can configure that lower if you want, but I'm using the default value of 20 here. The look schedule is set to six hours. So that means every six hours is going to query all of the images that you have on your machine to check if there's a later version. Next is the watch jitter. That's basically plus or minus 30 seconds within the cron job we specified before. So six hours plus or minus 30 seconds. And that'll mean maybe that the workers can stagger a little bit better. I'm not entirely sure, uh, but that's what it says in the documentation. Provider Docker's true is enabled. That's because the provider for this is going to be Docker. And then the provider's Docker watch by default is also set to true. So what that means is by default, this is gonna look at all of your existing images on your machine and give you notifications about that. If you wanna set this to false, you would then need to go to each respective container, each compose file you've already got, and you will need to add a label to make it Dion enabled true. And then Dion would only look for containers with that tag enabled. Next up, we've got the notifications, and I'll give an example of that later in the video. But I've set up my Gotify endpoint. This is something that I host internally, and I've got a video on that if you want to go and set this up. There are competing things like Notify, but take your pick. I set a token because it expects a token. These are authenticated calls. I've given it a priority, and I've given it a timeout. You can change these values to whatever you want, but these defaults should be fine. This will then send a notification to Gotify whenever a new image is available. And it's a similar story for Discord, which I've also included here. And this will update my local Discord, i.e. my Jim's Garage Discord that you're all on. So any of my containers in here, and I might add some more in the future, this should hopefully give all of you a handy reminder. And you could obviously set this up to have your own personal Discord server if you wanted to go down that route. You simply need to go and create a webhook, and there's a guide available for doing that. I'll link it below. 
And you can also add some handy things here. So I've disabled this, but you can have mentions. So if you had a specific group of people that might care about that, you could add them as a group and then you could mention them specifically. Next, I've got the render fields true. So these are the fields within the notification. This is kind of a Discord nomenclature for creating that alert. Then I've got the Discord notification timeout of 10 seconds. And if you wanted to, you can create your own template. You can specify some code to generate that. You'll find that on the Dion website. I've left mine as the default because it's good enough for what I need. Lastly, we've got the labels of Dion enabled true. We've enabled it for this one itself. And we've also set it to restart always because I always want this up and available and I always want it to be checking my containers. And that's pretty much it. Like I said, there's a ton more flexibility, so do go and have a look on their website, but this should give you a pretty decent start into spinning up Dion and getting those notifications. So let's hop into the terminal now and let's deploy this thing. So I'm gonna run my sudo docker compose up dash D, and once that's pulled the image, I'm gonna hop into Portainer and let's have a look at those logs. And so here in Portainer, you can see that it's up and running and it's found 14 images on my Docker machine and it's set up an initial job and it will do the next run in six hours. So it looks like the second you spin this container up, it's gonna do that first check and then it's gonna go into that countdown mode, plus or minus 30 seconds to do the next update. So how do we know this is working? Well, handily, we can do a notification test. So let me do that now. So thankfully in Portainer, we can click the console for this container. So clicking on that, we wanna change this to SH and then click connect. And then we want to run the following command, which is Dion notify and then test. And it said that a notification was sent for Discord go to find notifiers. So let's go and check if that happened. And yeah, great. Over on my Gotify, you can see now that I got that test notification and it already found about an hour ago that the latest version of Portainer is available. Um, just on a side note, if you have updated Docker to version 26, you do need to update Portainer to version 2.20. You can't do that with the latest tag. You're going to need to pin it to this version to get that pulled down. Otherwise, this console isn't going to work. But now we can see that we have this up and running and so far so good. You can also see that it's created the notification within Discord. So everyone on the server can now see the latest available version of containers I'm running. And I think I can set it statically to do things that I'm not running as well. So it'll also pull down other ones. So thanks for watching everybody. This was a short and sweet one, but hopefully this is a really useful tool to make sure that you always stay ahead of the latest developments, i.e. new features, etc., but also important security updates for your home lab, especially for things that are going to be web accessible, things like your media server, web pages, etc. Let me know if this is something that you're going to use. And as always, if you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that sub, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.